Hello people of YouTube, Josiah here for the New Gaming Channel. Now I'm very, very excited to be bringing you guys my breakdown of the new Bloodborne gameplay trailer. Now, before we get started, a few things need to be said, and uh, the air needs to be cleared. First off, anything that you don't see in this video that I'm talking about, anything you don't actually see good hard evidence for, is my own speculation. And if you don't like the speculation that I'm going to be, uh, going to be doing, or if you just want to see the trailer, you want to get hyped, and you don't want to see me breaking things down or slowing things down and talking about them, this video is not for you. I'll leave a link to the original video in the description. You guys can go check that out and just watch that very, very short clip. Uh, still lots of exciting stuff, so don't uh, knock it before you watch it. <laughs> very, very awesome. Anyway, so let's get started here. Now as the trailer begins to roll, I want to draw you guys' attention to something. The architecture. While I know it's massive and hard to completely miss, it's also in the background and easy to overlook. As we're going to see this demon beast on screen here, I want you to actually just ignore this and look past it. Um, so, the architecture here is already starting to look amazing and we're only a few seconds into the trailer. Apparently, the city, Yarnum, that you'll be playing in, I don't know, exclusively, or just most of your time will be spent here, I'm not quite sure, but Yarnum is apparently based on the Tower of Latria. Now, if you don't know what the Tower of Latria is, I can't blame you, because I've been there and I had to look it up. The Tower of Latria is from Demon Souls. It was a giant prison building city type construct almost. It was very dreadful and terrible. You didn't want to spend much time there, and while all of this city of Yarnum isn't giving me the feeling of terror and dread, and a lot of it I actually very much want to go to and experience, a lot of it is returning with that that Tower of Latria dread-esque feel, and I'm very excited for this. Also, while we still have this paused, I want to mention that if you guys like these screenshots where I'm, I'm stopping the game and talking about things, I'll have a folder linked in the description where you can come check these out and download them, maybe use them as your background, and I think it needs to be said there will be no monetary gain for me. Anyway, moving on. Now again, I'm going to caution you guys to just look past the monster for now, ignore it, we'll talk more about it later when it shows up again. Now this NPC slash announcer says some very important, very weighted in my mind, words. He says, Dear friend, take heed. Blood is foul. And when night falls, the hunters return. Now, this is very exciting to me, because this kind of confirms some info that I had that wasn't uh, official or confirmed yet. The first thing is that uh, Dear Friend Take Heed Blood is Foul is a reference now to a gameplay mechanic that uh, I guess now is confirmed by this. It's a little bit of speculation, but it's not very far off with what we're getting in this trailer. So there is a known mechanic now that's been talked about by the people that are working on the game where blood is used to power your character up, and there are two types of blood. There is tainted blood, which everything has, all the creatures and monsters that you kill has, and it powers your character up. But upon absorbing too much tainted blood as a mechanic, well, you'll transform into a beast, much like many of the creatures and the monsters and the messed up people in the city of Yarnum. This, this mechanic is very important for, I'm, I'm sure, multiple reasons, but there's a few I want to talk about. First off, according to the website below that now has info that correlates to what is being said in this trailer, uh, although it's not an official source, it's a blog, is that when you transform into a beast, you uh, everything in the game changes, from gameplay to, to perspective and way things look. Being a beast, I'm also certain, has drawbacks. Uh, now, I want to talk about the rest of what he said. When night falls, the hunters return. Uh, apparently, a PvP mechanic here, shout out to all the PvPers, I'm a big one myself here. When you transform to a beast, other players will hunt you down. Probably a covenant or just some common mechanic that'll work around PvP here. And the other part of it is that when you transform into a beast to go back, which I'm sure at some point you may want to, there may be just some people that go on a rampage or something, um, you'll have to get pure blood. And pure blood is carried by NPCs, which I'm sure a lot of them will be helpful and you won't want to kill, and other players. So another... another different side of the coin here for PvP. So there's the, there's the mechanic where there will be people going to other worlds and hunting down transformed beast-like players. And then there's the 
the again reverse side of that where the hunt or the um the transforms beast like players will be invading or hunting other players or npcs to get their blood and go back to normal so it's very cool some new new gameplay mechanics especially referencing pvp coming to the front here very very exciting stuff I just wanted to pause the video here to say, wow, is this game shaping up to look amazing or what? Now, I'm sure they showed this for a reason. It doesn't seem to be the player's perspective. It seems to be just the camera panning through. And they may be just showing this off to get us hyped. And this may not be in the final version of the game. We don't know for sure. But I don't think that they would do that personally. I think that this is a part of Yarnum that eventually will traverse through. I personally hope it does look a little different. I hope it's a little darker and a bit more spooky. I don't like how bright it is, but it makes for a great screenshot if you want to check this picture out, look at it more closely, use it as a background, what have you. I have a link for that in the description below. Now I wanted to pause this and talk a little bit about this. Not too much because this doesn't seem to be very representative of any gameplay. Uh, this seems to be just a pre-rendered cutscene, but nonetheless, it is beautiful in my mind. While I may not share your sense of beauty, I actually cannot wait to come here. It actually is supposed to be maybe a bit spooky or foreboding, but I just think it's kind of like a masterpiece. I think if the game looks anything at all like this, it's going to be just absolutely wonderful. Now this is the transformable weapon we've seen in previous trailers. Very cool, but nothing new. This has me very excited, an actual showcase of some gameplay mechanics. As you can see there in slow motion, the weapon was swung and extended in the same motion. And then, a very quick sidestep leads into a shotgun blast, stunning or killing the other enemy. I want to break this down now and speculate some in a second. First off, the weapon transformation. We knew that it would be in the game, but not quite like this. As a PvPer, I'm already seeing many useful applications where the weapon transformation, being such a smooth, uh, uninterrupted part of the combo, could catch your opponent off guard and potentially win you a match you may not have otherwise. Very cool, very exciting. And the last thing that we now have up on screen is the shotgun blast. Now this is more speculation than the weapon transformation that we saw, uh, but I want to again reference the blog I have linked below. And again, it's not official, but now it's seeming that a lot of the information is correlating to what we're seeing in this video. So, the shotgun blast. I want to actually, this may be a bit of a stretch, but I want to say that this was stunning the enemy that was shot, not killing it. Now, I want to base this off of the fact that in the Souls games, enemies typically ragdoll when they're killed, and that we didn't really see many enemies dying in this video, and that's probably why, because as a gameplay trailer, to keep it kind of appeasing, you don't want so much of that ragdolling going on. So I think this enemy was shot and stunned, and this again would correlate to the info we have in this blog. Very cool, and I believe that the, the firearms are meant to be supplementary to blade weapons, not kind of take over. They're kind of meant to do stunning uh, type attacks and not really finish... I mean, I guess they could finish enemies off, but it's supposed to do low damage, I should say. Now this part of the video is one that many people may have not paid much attention to, and I wouldn't blame you, there just seems to be one baddie, not much going on here, but I think the important part and the reason they showed this is the torches. The torch mechanic is making a comeback, and again according to this blog, which is not an official source but a lot of the information is, is seemingly being confirmed now, torches are meant to be more important in Bloodborne. Apparently there are parts of the game that are pitch black and nearly unplayable without the use of a torch. Now the enemy holding a torch as well as the player here tells me that this is kind of being confirmed in a way. Again, a bit of speculation, but not too far out of the ballpark, I think. A few things of note happen in this short gameplay clip. The obvious one is the enemy is using a ranged weapon. We can see that it's a rifle of some sort, maybe. There seemed to be a bullet shot out. Uh, maybe quite annoying, maybe quite cool. We'll see how that mechanic works out in the future. Uh, the second thing that uh, kind of stands out is the architecture and the lighting. This area of the game looks quite beautiful, and this seems to be, again, gameplay and representative of what we'll be playing through. It may change as time goes on, but uh, personally, I really like the feel of this area, the kind of ashes drifting through the air from a fire that seems to be on the right, uh, the lighting in the darkness and the, the like overcast moon moonlight uh, is pretty awesome. Uh, and the last thing that I want to mention that may not be quite as noticeable or stand 
stand out is the, the carriage of some sort that seems to be there. So enemies may have transportation of some sort. I'm having flashbacks of Executioner's Chariot. Uh, the horses that they'll be using may actually look something like that. And uh, the, the carriages, they don't seem to be cars. I don't know if anyone might get bent out of shape about there being technology. Uh, I'm sure that that would kind of ruin the feel a bit, but it does seem to be a carriage if you look at the wheels. It just seems to be something that's pulled by an animal of some sort. So again, yeah, you might see <laughs> a boss that uh, pays homage to the Executioner's Chariot. A few things of note here. Initially I missed this, but this enemy seems to sense the player's presence but not react, maybe afraid of the light like some enemies were in Dark Souls 2. These giant bird-like creatures seem to be very aggressive and affected by the virus or disease that is spread throughout Yarnum. This seems to be a cutscene, however, not quite gameplay like this following bit is. Now these seem to be very far gone, werewolf-like humans. It, uh, it's quite terrifying to think of how you have to fight these. They're very imposing and aggressive. Now this next bit is something that caught my attention, and I sure hope caught yours. The small curved sword the player seems to be holding hooks into this appendage on his back and transforms it into a very crude, awesome looking scythe. Now this is more light being shed on weapon transformations, and many transformable weapons being in the game. Very awesome, very exciting, and I can't wait to get my hands on this. Now this next bit is quite gruesome, but also quite important, I feel. I think it's easy to speculate this is a critical hit of some sort that seems to either gut or just split this enemy in half. Gruesome, but awesome. Now this seems to be a bit difficult to make out without slowing the clip down, but at 10% speed here we can see it's a transformation of some sort. There are two likely explanations in my mind for what's happening here. First of which is that this is the player transforming into a beast, a mechanic that I mentioned and talked a bit about previously in this video. And the other thing is that this is quite possibly the boss that we see in the next clip. The reason that this may not be the most likely of the two options, this being the boss or mini boss that we end up seeing in, in a bit here, is that it seems to be in a dark cove or cave of some sort when this transformation is happening, but the boss is showed immediately in the following scene and obviously seems to be leaping down from the sky, as you can see now. So, yeah, the boss made a descent from somewhere quite far off. It could have been just from a building up above. It could have been from uh, a distant land. Who knows? It's kind of hard to speculate about that at this point. One thing I will mention, as you'll see now, is that the boss design is quite good. I am personally really looking forward to bosses like this, and I hope there are quite more. I don't want to talk too much about this guy, though. He's probably one of the, the first bosses, or even a mini-boss. I don't think they would really they would really spoil or give too much info as far as big and important enemies are concerned. And so the nightly hunt begins. And so the nightly hunt begins. <laughs> could be a covenant, could be a lot of things. I'm content not to speculate about that too much at this point. Uh, but what I am going to do now, if you guys uh, would give me a bit of your time, I'm going to give you a spiel. Uh, I'm going to recommend that you subscribe to my channel. I've been doing the Souls games since Demon Souls was still kind of new and Dark Souls hadn't come out yet. If you don't believe me, you can check my channel and you could see that uh, several years ago, before Dark Souls ever came out, I recorded Demon Souls for my channel. Uh, I've been PvPing a lot since Dark Souls 2 dropped. That's kind of what I got known for. I'm not huge now. I have about 9,000 subscribers. I love each and every one of them. They're all great people. <laughs> I, I call them my YouTube family, quite loving. But uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of, currently, I do a lot of Dark Souls 2 PvP, uh, I covered the DLC, did a Let's Play, did a lot of guides and walkthroughs and all kinds of cool things, and uh, I do Fashion Souls builds, PvP builds, and, and lots of different invasions on different characters. Uh, I think I make a lot of quality content, but I'll let you be the judge of that, and if you want to join the family, you're, you're very, very welcome to. We welcome you with open arms, and we'd be glad if you did. Anyway, I, I plan to cover the next coming Dark Souls 2 DLCs, the one coming out this month, and the one coming out next month, as well as Bloodborne when it finally drops next year. Going to be an exciting time these next few months, and uh, hopefully a lot of growth will happen. And again, we welcome you if you, if you would like to join. Alright guys, I want to head out. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed and you're hyped for some, for some uh, Bloodborne. If you are, leave a like, and I'll uh, catch you hopefully in a future video. Love you all. God bless.